In this video, you are going to learn how to create this type of tabs completely from scratch in Bubble and without any plugins. Alright, so let's start by building our UI. In this example, I'm going to stick with this type of design, so that's what I'm going to make, but you can apply it to any design you like. By the way, if you don't want to spend too much time on building your tabs, you can check out no codable components library. You'll find more than 350 ready to use and responsive components for Bubble, and you will also find some tabs components that you can simply copy and paste to your app. If you want to check out no codable components, you will find the link in the description of this video. All right, so let's get going. Let's remove this pre-made tab from the codable components, and we'll start by adding a group to our page. So basically my page as a container layout of colon. So I'm gonna get a group, I'm gonna use it, and this will be our main container. I'm gonna rename it, I'm gonna give it full width on our page, uh, and I'm gonna keep this mean height and this fit height to content, just to make it uh, take the minimum height possible. Into this group, we are going to add the repeating group that we're going to use to build our tabs. Why do we use a repeating group? It's to make sure that when we are on a screen that is too narrow, we can scroll into this element and this is done with a repeating group. So we can go into a repeating group, make it take full width. I can keep this main width if I want. Uh, and I'm going to set its mean height to maybe 40 pixels and we can come back to it later. So now, type of content and data source, we are going to get working on this later. But what I want to do is to have only one row and I want an unfixed number of colon and I'm going to get rid of this min width. I'm also going to remove those separators uh, and this border as well. Now that we have our repeating group, we can go ahead and add a group inside our repeating group that will be our group tab uh, label. This group will contain a text and maybe an icon if you want to add one. So let's go ahead and uh, let's keep it min, it's min width and we are going to uh, say 20 pixel min height. And inside of it, I'm going to add a text that will display the label of my tab. So for now, I'm going to name it label. Maybe I'm going to give it a higher uh, size. Uh, I'm going to set it to medium and I'm going to uh, make it in a gray color, something like this. So this will be the default color, so the color when the tab is not selected. Uh, we're going to get some more design afterwards, but that will be good for now. What I'm going to do is also add a bit of spacing between all my labels. So I'm going to add a separator, I'm going to add 8 pixels of separator. And as you can see, we have a, a small line. It's because the separator has a color, so I'm going to go ahead and set the opacity of this color to zero. All right, so now we can do a little bit more of styling. So I'm going to, use, to add uh, a border at the bottom of my main group so that the border can take the whole width of the page. As you can see, it's a bit too dark currently. So I'm going to make something really, really light, something maybe like that. That's better. I'm going to add only uh, for demonstrating, I'm going to add some margin here, maybe here, here, and here, just to separate them from the side. So, as we can see, it's starting to look nice. Uh, I'm going to add some more width on this border. I'm going to set it to two. Uh, and we are starting to see a little bit of something that we like. All right, so now that we have a basic UI, we can focus on actually displaying the labels we want to see visible in our tabs. To do that, we are going to use obviously the repeating group we used earlier, and you can send it to the repeating group pretty much anything like a data type um, or an option set or even some text. In my case, I'm going to use an option set, which is what you are going to use most of the time, uh, and I'm going to use an option set called task status. So let's imagine that we are building a task manager. Uh, I want to have some tabs above a table or a repeating group with which I can filter my task to maybe display only the ones that have been completed, the ones that are late, and so on. So I'm going to do that. To do that, we are going to first set a type of content on our repeating group. In my case, that will be my option set task status, but it can be anything depending on your database structure. And I'm going to get all my task status. If you are working with a data type, you are going to use a do a search for and you will retrieve your, uh, your data type that you want to display in your tabs. Once I have done that, I need to make the data communicate all the way through my text label. So I'm going to have to set a type of content to the group just above my text label. 
So this is the task status. It's the same type of content than the one I set in my repeating group. And I'm going to choose the current sales task status. And now I can choose in this text, I can insert dynamic data and choose parents group task status and the display because I'm displaying an option set. And now if we preview, we can see that I have my tab showing, uh, my tabs option showing correctly. Okay, so we can now work on the logic. Basically, what we want to do is that when we click on an option, I need a cell of the repeating group, we want to keep track of the cell that has been clicked, of the tab that has been clicked and store it somewhere. To keep track of that, we are going to use a custom state that we are going to update each time an option is clicked to store the current tab. So how to do that? I'm going to add it to the group main container, but you can also add it to the page or any element you like. I'm going to go into the little eye icon and I'm going to create a new custom state that I'm going to call current tab. The state type will be the same content type than the one in our repeating group, which in my case is task status. And this is not a list, this is a single option, depending on your skills. And I'm also going to select a, a default value. So it can be anything in your option set. In my case, I'm going to choose the first one, pending. All right, so now we have our custom state. We have somewhere that we can send data to keep track of the tab that has been selected by the user. Now that we have created a custom state, we are going to use it to keep track of the last tab that has been selected. To do this, we are going to create a workflow that when a tab is clicked, will update the value of our custom state. So how do we do this? We are going to select the group tab label, which is the containing our text. So we don't add the workflow in the text, we add it on the group. I'm going to add a workflow and use an action called state, set state of an element. I'm going to select the group on which our custom state is attached. So group main container. I'm going to select our custom state, which is current tab in my case. And I'm going to give it the value current sales task status, which is the cell on which we clicked. So the tab on which we clicked. So now each time I'm going to click on a tab, the custom state will be updated with this value. This is how we keep track on the, of the current tab. So now if we take a preview, we can see that the cursor of my mouse has changed because we added a workflow on those groups. However, if I click on them, nothing really happens, or at least nothing seems to happen because it actually happens, but we do not really uh, reflect those changes. So this is what we are going to make. We are going to add some conditionals. So the first one will be on our text so that when the tab, the current tab is this tab, so the text will become blue, for example. So let's do that. I'm going to add a conditional to my text. And the conditional will be when our custom state, so group main container current tab, is parents group task status, which is the group of the current set. And then I'm going to change the font color to, for example, let's say a blue. Now, if I preview, you can see that the color has changed and I can select any tab I want. So now we can go a little bit further and maybe add some bottom border to our group tag, tab label. So let's say border style bottom. By default, the color of this border will be uh, opacity zero. And then when the custom state of main container current tab is current sales task status, I'm going to update the color of the bottom border, which is here. I'm going to set it to 426 to FF. And there we go. Now we are starting to get something uh, that looks like a tab. Obviously, with this method, you can create basically any tabs design you want. Uh, if you want to have some inspiration or maybe have some pre-made tabs, as I said earlier, you can check out no codable components. As you can see, we have a few tabs options, so with icons, uh, with a number displayed, uh, with a background, etc. etc. So basically, the only limit for that is your imagination. So now that we have a working tabs system, uh, we can actually use it to filter a search or to display uh, the right content depending on the tab. So let's try to see how we can do that with a repeating group that will display a list of tasks. All right, so for the example, I've built a quick, uh, a quick table. So as you can see, it is displaying a list of tasks. Uh, my type of content is task and uh, I'm doing a search for task. 
uh, here's how it looks so now what we want to do is to based on the tab selected here we want to filter based on the status so if i have completed selected i want to display only the tasks that have been completed and to do this all we have to do is to update the search here at the constraint and set it that status equal the value of our custom state which is attached to group main container current tab and because the current tab custom state we created earlier is the same type of data uh, than the status which is task status my open set well we can filter based on this so if i go to my tab and that i get preview by default my tab are on pending and now i can change and display only the one that are late on draft completed and so on. and you can apply to basically anything you'd like to filter as long as it is a repeating group or a table in this case now following your needs you might not need uh, to filter an actual table maybe you need to display only a group a specific one to do that we are going to get rid of this table i'm going to illustrate how to do that i'm going to add a few different groups that will represent the tab we want to show or hide uh, depending on the on the on the tab so i'm going to rename it group tab one so this will be your tab with your actual content i'm going to set a few different colors set to blue 20 percent and i'm going to add some padding here and there and some margin here there we go so now what i want to do is to duplicate everything this way we have group tab three group tab two sorry tab two tab three i'm going to set some different colors so that we can see our changes let's say this one is green let's say this one is orange right so now i want this tab to be visible only when the current tab is uh, let's say pending the first one so what i can do is to go into layout I'm going to hide it by default. So I'm going to unselect visible on page load. This way it will be hidden by default. And I'm going to select also collapse when hidden. And I'm going to make the same thing on every tab. So by default, these tab, this tabs, sorry, will be hidden. They won't be visible. Now I want to display this tab only when my custom state value is, let's say, pending. And at this point, I want to make this element visible. And now I simply have to copy this condition on all our tabs. So pending, completed, and let's say late. And I'm going to need one more just for the last tab. Oops, sorry. Wrong spot. There we go. So tab four, and this one will be when it is on draft. And now if I hit preview, You can see that on pending, I have my first group. And completed, I have the second, the third, and the fourth. So basically, that's how you create a tab that will display different content. All you need to do is to create your tab, hide them by default, and then based on the value of our custom state, you can make them visible. And there you go. Now you know how to create completely from scratch and without any plugin, a fully functional tab system in Bubble. I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to like and to subscribe. See you.